Boeing is an absolute mess. Could China be playing a role? Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. Real quick before I begin. Five years ago, Matt, Shelley, and I were in Hong Kong watching two million people march through the streets to protest the Hong Kong government and ultimately the CCP. So to commemorate it, China Uncensored is partnering with the Hong Kong Democracy Council to create the first ever digital Hong Kong Lenin Wall, a place for people around the world to show their support for Hong Kongers by writing digital post-it notes of support for Hong Kong. Again, that website is hkleninwall.com. I'll leave a link below. We built the site with a team of security experts. It's completely anonymous, it doesn't track cookies or any other personal information, and it does not store IP addresses. Our goal is to get 10,000 unique posts by the end of June to show Hong Kongers that the world hasn't forgotten them and begin to piss off the CCP. I'll be picking some of my favorite messages to read on a special live stream this week, so don't wait. And now, on to the rest of the show. Boeing has become the butt of many jokes these days, and rightfully so. It's been plagued by scandal after scandal because their planes have encountered many, many, many mishaps. It's so bad that while feeding a baby and saying, here comes the airplane, they ask, that's not a Boeing, is it? According to the National Transportation Safety Board, there have been 29 incidents globally involving Boeing planes between the beginning of January and April 7th this year alone. This is somehow down from last year's 34 incidents in the same time frame. Yay for progress! Because of these incidents, Boeing faces accusations of skipping inspections, falsifying records, and taking production shortcuts in order to keep business running as fast and as cheaply as possible. And two whistleblowers just so happen to die. Coincidentally, I'm not making any accusations. Also, just for the record, I am not suicidal. I repeat, I am not suicidal. In response to all this, the Federal Aviation Administration audited Boeing and also Spirit Aerosystems, which supplies fuselages to Boeing and wings to Airbus. The FAA found multiple instances where the companies allegedly failed to comply with manufacturing quality control requirements. Sounds pretty bad. So, can things get any worse? Why, yes. Yes, they absolutely can. Because now we have the opportunity to wonder whether we can trust the titanium in Boeing and Airbus jets. According to Spirit Aerosystems officials, fake titanium may have been built into components in planes between 2019 and 2023. Think about that the next time you take to the skies. For the Boeing 787 Dreamliner, that includes the passenger entry door, cargo doors, and a component that connects the engines to the plane's airframe. Well, fortunately, doors aren't that important when you're 40,000 feet in the air. Who doesn't enjoy a nice breeze? For the Boeing 737 MAX and the Airbus A220, the affected parts include a heat shield that protects a component which connects a jet's engine to the frame. And who really needs engines? Just tell the passengers to start flapping their arms. I'm sure it'll be fine. The reason Spirit Aerosystem started investigating this is because a parts supplier found small holes in titanium formed from corrosion, not something you really want on a plane. At the center of the scandal is the material supplier Turkish Aerospace Industries. It sells materials like titanium to companies that make aircraft parts, and those parts make their way to Spirit Aerosystems, which are used in Boeing and Airbus planes. But last December, an Italian company, Titanium International Group, discovered that something changed in the titanium it typically gets from Turkish Aerospace Industries. Additionally, it also suspects that the certificates that came with the titanium were forged. So, let's play a game. Guess where the titanium came from? I'll give you 60 seconds to make your choice. Yeah, it was probably someplace in China. People familiar with the situation said it appeared that an employee at the Chinese company that sold the titanium had forged the details of the certificates, writing that the material came from another Chinese company, Baoji Titanium Industry. 
Baoji Titanium Industry says it didn't supply the titanium, and as far as we know, nobody can confirm the exact origin of the titanium. That's the kind of accountability we truly need for large pressurized metal tubes loaded with people careening through the air. But no surprise there, since China loves to make its supply chains so opaque and complex. Heck, it's so complex that Chinese companies have even made it into U.S. military hardware. It's less of a supply chain and more of a supply labyrinth. And I'm using this picture because it's so complex I can't confirm or deny if a Goblin King is involved. Because of this, Spirit Aerosystems officials said that they tested and confirmed that the titanium is the right kind for airplanes. But whether they meet safety standards is a whole nother question. The company was unable to confirm if the titanium was treated through the approved airplane manufacturing process. In fact, Spirit Aerosystems said it passed some materials testing, but failed others. Don't worry though, both Boeing and Airbus insist that the titanium is safe. But out of an abundance of caution, Boeing said it's removing affected parts on planes before delivering them to airlines. What heroes? The exposure of poor quality falsified Chinese titanium in Boeing planes should be a wake-up call reminding people that putting China in your supply chain slash labyrinths is not a good idea, no matter how weirdly attracted you are to Goblin Kings. It's no secret that Chinese companies frequently sideline global quality and safety standards to churn out cheap junk. Look no further than China's track record of making horrible tofu infrastructure. Explosive EVs and toxic consumer products, yes, they made toxic children's products. So babies being fed also have to ask, was that spoon made in China? Heck, if China's willing to falsify information about its entire economy, which it does, don't be surprised if it falsifies things like certificates that come with titanium. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Xi Jinping was falsifying his hairline. This is on top of the fact that materials coming out from China, like aluminum, involve slave labor as well. Despite all this, aviation suppliers are becoming even more reliant on China for materials like titanium. I guess they must all be giant fans of aggressively refreshing breezes. And hey, if you haven't yet, visit hklennonwall.com and leave a post-it note for Hong Kong. Again, I'll be picking some of my favorite messages to read on a special live stream this week. Link is below. Now, doing this project and this whole show would not have been possible without the support of viewers like you. The crowdfunding website, patreon.com slash China Uncensored. You can contribute however much you want, but it could even be as little as a dollar an episode. Every bit helps. It's what makes projects like the Digital Lenin Wall possible. And the CCP is taking notice. That's why Chinese state-run media has called China Uncensored disgraceful anti-China garbage. So join what I call the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army on Patreon. And as a thank you to everyone who gives on Patreon, I'll respond to one of your questions or comments at the end of these episodes. Today's comes from, oh, a new patron, Alex. Why did the people vote for the China sympathizing parties then? Now they're taking a strong stance, better late than never, I guess. Ah, so Alex is asking that in response to some of my recent episodes, detailing the protests and fighting inside Taiwan's parliament over new legislation that many worry would give China way more access to Taiwan. So to sum it up quickly, Taiwan's new president, Lai Ching-de, is a member of the Democratic Progressive Party. But his party lost the majority in the legislature, with the KMT party and the TPP gaining ground. And together, they could be drawing Taiwan dangerously close to China. So, why did anyone vote for them? A couple of reasons. One is that Lai's party has been in power for a decade. There are also domestic issues involved and enough people want to change. Now, the KMT doesn't portray itself as the pro-China party. They just want reasonable economic engagement with China and believe that's the best way to avoid a military invasion, which I think is stupid, but it's appealing to a lot of people, especially those with business concerns. The TPP, the Taiwan People's Party, sells itself as a third choice for people fed up with both, which, as I said, is appealing. They really teamed up with KMT, though, in the past election to try and beat the DPP, and it was pure chaos, but it was enough to split the legislature. 
But as the protests show, there is real concern that this new alliance will push forward a trade pact with China that could spell disaster for Taiwan's sovereignty. Thank you for your question and your support, Alex. You can join Alex on Patreon by clicking this orange button, and remember to check out the digital Lenin wall. Again, the link is below. And thank you to everyone who supports the show on Patreon for making it possible to really stick it to the CCP. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.